Whiskey, Jason here. Whiskey from the viewpoint of an American in Germany, tasting rare and exotic whiskey. Look what I have! Woodford Reserve Master Collection number 16, or is it 15? Very fine, rare bourbon. Yay! So I paid 120 euros for this. In the States, it's between 120 and 130 dollars. So um, if you consider there was 25% import tariffs on this, that's a great price. So, um, 48.4%. I actually have the 700 milliliter bottle, which is very interesting. So, you actually have the 750, probably. Um, here we can see all the dates and all that stuff. So, 770 CL. So, we have here proof 90.4. We have 50, uh, 45.4%. So 52, wow, I have 52.5, I can't read. And um, this is the um, limited edition series number 15, 16. Why do I say 15? Because in the press release it says 15. If you look at all the um, different um, master's collections so far, it is the sixth, it is only the 15th. Now you go, hey, this is not a master's collection. They don't look like that. They look like this, and you were right. The original 14 all look like this. This is actually um, the batch proof here from 2020. Yay, maybe they counted this as then 15, I don't know. Um, but this is 61.5, um, 61.6%, yummy, yummy. All right, so um, not gonna compare it to that wouldn't be fair, I think. So we have this nice little booklet. Originally, I looked at the nice little label here at the top, that tax stamp, that old tax stamp. And I was expecting to see two names on it. I was hoping to see selected by um, master distiller Chris Morris. Chris, love you. Good, good job. And it says on the other side, selected by master distiller uh, Chris Morris. And I was like, wait a second. I read everywhere there's a second name here. And I really had to look at the little booklet before I found the second name. Um, well, that's one way of doing it here. We put my... We have here, then we have Elizabeth McCall. Yay! She is the assistant uh, master distiller. Um, so I hope one day her name will finally ma make it to the front of the, bo of the bottle instead of the back. It's not even the back, instead of the little booklet here. Um, she's going to take over slowly and surely from um, Chris Morris, who's done a great job. In the past, basically the Master Collections won. I was not a great fan of them from the taste. They were weird. They were unique. They were way outside and left field always. And they always looked at the past. There was the 1838 Sweet Mash or Sour Mash Sweet Mash. There were all these different things they had done in the past and they redid again. Um, with exper experimenting, but also here we are now going to look at the present and towards the future. Also, that's one reason maybe the why, why they changed the barrel shape here. Standard Woodford Reserve um, recipe, 72% corn, 18% rye, 10% malted barley. And of course, the very first things they talked about is not on the bottle. I'm so, the bottle is a contract with the people. Um, it's with their 17 year old juice in here. So Chris and Elizabeth have been holding back barrels that were actually distilled in 2003 for this very, very special release. Now, um, first of all, I would like to know how many bottles were released in America and in the world. So we have different bottle sizes. We have 750 in America. We have 770 over here in Europe. Were there 2,000? Were there 20,000? Were there 200,000? Um, I don't know. I mean, come on, that'd be good to know at least to see how rare and exotic this is. And second of all, I'd like to know what percentage of the juice in here is 17 years old. Is it 0.1%? Is it 1%? Is it 10%? So it could be all that and it could all be true. There is a portion of this whiskey which is 17%. Now, if you research and you research and then you research some more, which I had to do, you will find a website, Whiskey Advocate, in which um, it is said that Chris Morris himself stated, and to quote, the youngest whiskey in this is 11 years old. Oh, now we're cooking. Um, as my grandfather would say, now we're cooking with gas. Um, so this is an, between an 11 and 17 year old product. Does that still justify a 120 euro slash dollar price tag at 48.4%? I don't think so. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out the double oak. 
Now, over here in Europe, we only have 43.2%, by the way. It's not even 48 point, it's actually 52 point. Uh, I need to change my thing. It's 45.2%. I don't know why I got this wrong. So, do 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 45.2%. Somehow, Woodford Reserve always loves the 0.2, by the way. So, this is 43.2, um, and this is 45.2. So, um, where's my glass? Here we go. So I'm going to pour a little bit of double oak. Now, the the unique thing about double oak, of course, it's been in virgin oak um, containers twice. And, of course, you get a lot more of that woodiness. I can get this for 40 euros. So it means I can buy three of these for one of these. All right. I can go over here to the um, Woodford Reserve Distiller Selection. Um, this is also over here because it's in Germany. It's 43.2%. Europe is what we get. And um, so it's 3% less than this. Um, and yeah, what can I say? I can get um, three and a half bottles of this or one bottle of that. So um, should I pour a little bit of a glass of this? Why not? So let's see if this is going to be different or almost the same. So on the nose and on the palate. So, glass in the middle is the uh, Woodford Distiller Select. Here we have our very fine rare bourbon. I don't like that name. And here we have our double oaked. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm getting a lot of acetone. It's like a fingernail polish coming right off that at the beginning. Um, that is not very pleasing. Now, um, over here in Germany and probably in Europe in total, we have a lot of people that go to bourbon. The first thing they smell, they go, oh, we have airplane glue. And it's, eee, it's airplane glue, it's airplane glue, it's airplane glue. I don't know, maybe you did that in those models as a child or that um, it could be a car, car uh, model glue, um, but that model glue problem. So I built more airplanes. Um, and that's what a lot of people are getting, and that's what I'm getting. I'm usually somewhat immune to it, but I do get it here in the Woodford. Now, um, the question that I have again is this I know is made on a pot still and a column still. They mix it. So I guess this was also made on pot and column still, apparently. No word do they say only pot still on there. Nice. Less of the acetone than on the very fine rare bourbon. Oh, I like my double oak. I really, really like my double oak. Um, oh, yeah. I get some cinnamon. I get some clove. I get the allspice. I get just the wonderful, wonderful bourbon moment cranked up to eight with a little bit of wood on top of there. Mm, yummy, yummy, yummy. Absolutely my, my wheelhouse, that double oak. Um, good stuff. Over here. Oh, I'm getting sweet wood now. I'm getting a much a sweeter moment. Now, um, I have a friend. He is the do he's a doctor of chemistry. And we talked about what happens in the glass after you pour it. Because many people says, oh, the whiskey needs to breathe. Well, yes, they're not wrong. And they talked about, yeah, you have to wait for it to oxidize. Now, alcohol doesn't really oxidize. You get um, basically um, vinegar not good stuff so um what's happening in most cases mostly is um things are evaporating we have volatile molecules in here that leave the glass and those bad um, molecules leave and they leave a lot of the good stuff in here and so when you come back after 5 10 30 an hour um, you get a lot of those darker richer more nice um, moments why? Because those volatile uh, moments have actually, the molecules have actually left the glass and are no longer entering our nose. So um, breathing is actually right. The, the whiskey needs to breathe. The whiskey needs to have some time to actually um, get rid of that bad stuff. I'm still, the, the jury's still out of my brain about is that a good or bad thing? Because I'm going to say very honestly, I think whatever the da master distiller put in the bottle should be drunk as it is in the bottle. So um, what is the real taste of a whiskey? Is the real taste of a whiskey when it's first opened? Is the real taste of a whiskey after it gets down below the neck pour? Is the real taste of the whiskey at the very end when it's had a lot of time to have 
oxygen and air and um, to leave a lot of those particles. What is that real taste of a bottle? And I, at the moment, tend to think, even though it might not be the best, that the best taste of a bottle, not the best, but the real taste of the bottle is exactly how it was bottled so at the beginning. And that's why I do my videos when I pop the cork, I pour it, and I taste it, and I review it. Now, of course, you can review your bottles after the neck pour. Great for you. Of course, you can review your bottles when they're all the way down here. Um, but I actually fill up these bottles within days of opening, and so everyone gets a nice little sample bottle. Let's just use this as an example, um, with less air than that in it usually, and therefore, they also get a freshly opened bottle and they can try that in the sample and that's what they also evaluate and assess their whiskey on. So um, that's for me the, the true taste of a bottle. Now I know you probably have totally different opinions allowed but that's what I'm judging this whiskey on. Um, the neck pour because that's exactly how um, Chris and Elizabeth put it in the bottle, and therefore I assume that they want me to taste it like that. Otherwise, maybe they should have put it in a vapping tank and let it air out for a long time. But of course, then they would have lost alcohol volume. Hmm. Do they really want to do that? So um, allow one last um, assumption. I've never heard this comparison, but it just came to mind. I might be totally wrong, but I might be onto something here. So if we have to wait for some of those volatile moments to leave the glass, I almost have the feeling it's like, like um, meat that I fry in the pan. I take a 300 gram something or other and I put in the pan and about a 50 to 80 grams of water comes out. And then I'm left with 220, 240 grams of real meat at the end. And that's somehow what could happen with whiskey. Now it's not that much in volume versus weight ratio here but we have to let some of this evaporate and get out of here. All right, and I really digress there. I didn't even plan to do that, but it's something that's been, um, I've been thinking about a lot, at least recent, recently, as you kind of noticed. All right, much better now. <laughs> I can really, acetone's gone. Mm, ah, okay, when I, when I do this, shake it a little bit, and that's why some people actually kind of go, they breathe in and get rid of that first little layer of um, volatile uh, molecules, and then they, then they sniff and go, oh, very good. I think it was oh, um, Pappy Van, uh, Van Winkel, I did that as well. The son, not the father. All right, try it. sweeter than I expected. More sweet wood, actually, more than I expected. I do get a little bit of that um, bourbon, um, clove, cinnamon, allspice moment. A lot of sweetness is added into it. Is it a good whiskey? Is it a great whiskey? Not in my opinion. Is it a, I'm oh, sorry, is it an okay whiskey? Yes, okay, but, but to good. This is a C++ type of whiskey. Um, especially the moment that really, really disturbed me was the fact that I have to wait 20 minutes to drink this and I, um, and to enjoy this more. I really think that is a flaw, in my personal opinion, um, and I um, take up points for that. That's just my personal um, view of this. All right, going over to our distiller um, selection. It's a little bit watery compared to this, 43 versus 45 percent. That had a little bit more heat towards the end as well. This is actually a little bit more balanced, to be honest. That is a good, good, solid whiskey. I like. Don't like more. I like this is sweeter, but I like. All right, going over to one of my favorite whiskeys. Straight off the shelf. That's not a special edition. Mmm. Mmm. I really like the double oaked. 
Mm, it's got the vanilla. It's got the wood. It's got all those um, all spices and all that Christmas goodness in that. Mm, a little bit of Christmas cake as well. Christmas pudding. Mm, like a little bit of plum, actually. Very, very, very well done. Mm. Good. I'm not here to review that in general. I'm here to review the um, Woodford Reserve Master Collection. Very fine, rare <clears throat> bourbon. Been sidetracked a lot today. I've already given it my um, C plus, B minus type of grade, more of a C plus because of the nose. Um, Jason from um, Mash and Drum did a great review on this. Go over to his channel, watch his review if you really want a um, much better review of this. Um, he did a great job of that. Uh, it came out in December of 2020. I'm now in April of May of 2021. Um, so it takes a little while for things to get over here. And he did a lot more research into this than I did. See? I don't like the nose at the beginning. It's really that acetone. It's really that airplane glue. It really takes off. I did mention this is standard um, recipe, 72% corn, 18% rye, 10% malted barley. Um, yeah. $120, 120 euros, not worth it. It's a D minus for value for money, in my opinion. Go out and buy three bottles of the double oaked. Go out there, buy three and a half, maybe maybe on sale, even four bottles of the distillers. Um, um, distiller select from Woodford Reserve. It's just not worth the money, in my opinion. Now, if you do find a Woodford Reserve batch proof, and I did find one recently over here. Um, they were sold out within minutes over here. Um, as I mentioned, I have 61.6%. If you can find this for $120, buy it. This is worth 120 euros um, or dollars. Um, it's not, but still it's much, 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 much better than this. This is, as I said, um, a C plus, and this is like a A minus B plus. This is mm, and this is, oh, well, yeah. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I, if this was an $80 bottle and would be on the shelf constantly, I would buy it. Um, I would buy it a lot, um, but it's not, and it's, it was a special release, and it was delicious, or it is delicious. All right, good. I have never tried, um, not even my German video, um, a few drops of water. What happens? The acetone kicks in. Good, yeah. It's got depth. It does have character. It does have a little bit of complexity. It's got that sweet wood interesting moment in the middle and towards the end. But it definitely does have some acetone moments as well, which I'm not a big fan of. So I'm going to stay with my comments. C++, B minus minus, value for money, D. All right, Whiskey Jason here, Whiskey from the Viewpoint of an American over here in Germany. My question of the day is, what is your favorite Woodford Reserve product? There have been 15 and or slash 16 different um, master collections. We have a different other, a couple other products out on the market already with their double oaked. We have then the rye, we had the, um, the malt, we had the, um, then the bourbon. So we had all four different types of um, products that they put out on the market. So what is your favorite Woodford Reserve? All the best. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you, Jason, here. Like, subscribe, and tell others. Bye-bye.